Okay, I'm going to talk about the quantum mechanical model. As we mentioned before, the quantum mechanical model expands upon Bohr's idea. With Bohr's idea of the atomic model, he said that electrons existed within energy levels, and that idea is still true. So electrons exist within energy levels that we sometimes designate as the letter N, or some people also call them shells. Energy levels are going to be designated by the period numbers, which are the row numbers on the periodic table. Energy levels are the general location around the nucleus where the electron is moving. This is the most general location, okay, not very specific. We want to get more specific. This is talking about something like where is the general building number on our campus, okay? Energy levels are not equally spaced apart. They become more tightly packed the farther you get from the nucleus. So we're not looking at a perfect dartboard here. We're talking about energy levels that become closer and closer packed together. The higher the energy level number, the farther the electron is from the nucleus. So an energy level number of 1 means that those electrons are really close to the nucleus. An energy level of 4, of 5, of 6, the electrons are getting farther and farther away. Now, it's not enough to use the energy level numbers. Energy levels are just general, and they're large, so they can be further subdivided into what we call sublevels or subshells. Each energy level has the same n number of sublevels. What I mean by that is that if I have energy level 1, it's going to have one sublevel. If I have energy level 2, it will have two sublevels. Energy level 3 will have three sublevels, and so on. Now the sublevels are designated with letters, so we use the letters S, P, D, and F to designate the sublevels. These sublevel designations refer to the different unique shapes and the orbital types that they are divided into. So sublevels themselves can be further divided. And because the sublevels can be further divided, each sublevel can hold a unique number of electrons, as we're going to see. So whenever I talk about an S sublevel, I'm going to think, oh, S's can only hold two electrons. When I think about a P sublevel, I will say, oh, P's can hold six electrons. D sublevels can hold 10 electrons, and F sublevels can hold 14 electrons. The orbitals are now the specific regions of space where we would find the electrons. Each sublevel orbital so I'm talking about an S-type orbital, or a P-type orbital, or a D-type orbital, or an F-type orbital. Each sublevel orbital has a unique spatial shape and orientation. And as we mentioned the Pauli exclusion principle before, orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons each. So let's take a look at these orbital shapes. So what you can see here is I have my S, my P, and my D orbitals. Okay? So when I think about an entire S orbital, there's only one S orbital type. So S's can only hold two electrons. So if I put two dots here, I can show you that the S's can only hold two electrons. When I think about a P sublevel, right? Now a P sublevel consists of one, two, and three total orbitals. So a P sublevel can hold one, two, three, four, five, six total electrons in three orbitals each. If I think about a D sublevel, the entire D sublevel can has five orbitals, and since each orbital can hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, each orbital holds two electrons in five orbitals, the D sublevel can hold ten electrons. Now, one of the things to understand about these shapes is that with these shapes, we are just showing what we call density plots of an electron. And what this basically means are the most probable location in which we would find an electron. Now, if we take a look at this p orbital, for example, we have one, two electrons that will reside within this p orbital. What we don't know is how the electrons are traveling, but we do know that they're moving. They could move from one side to the other, they could move within their own orbital on one side. We have no idea how they're traveling, but we know that they're going to be traveling within this region of space. Okay. So the idea to understand is that we have all of these different types of sublevels and we have different orbitals. So again, the S, 
the P and the D refer to my sub level. And then within each sub level, I have my individual orbitals. So I have one orbital for S, I have one, two, three orbitals for P, and I have one, two, three, four, five orbitals for D. And then again, within each of these orbitals, I can hold a maximum of two electrons. So now let's see if you can think about what's going on when we get to a F-type. All right, so think, take a look at this for a moment. And let's see if you can answer this question before I put it up on the screen. Okay, how many orbitals do you see? Hopefully you're just counting on the screen that you're seeing a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are a total of seven orbitals within the F sub level. Okay, seven orbitals within the F sub level. Now let's think about the Pauli exclusion principle. How many electrons can each orbital hold? Each orbital can hold two electrons each. So I can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen total electrons that the F sublevel can hold. Okay? So we're just breaking it down. So if we think about this, oh, here are the density plots I mentioned before. And so this is what they were mentioned, what scientists have used to come up with these shapes. An S type orbital looks like these spheres. Okay, and the darker spots are the most likely location where you see an electron. The P-type orbitals kind of have these weird dumbbell-looking shapes. Okay, and so that's why they've been given those shapes. And you can see a 2P is much smaller than a 3P, which is much larger and occupies a larger region of space. Then we have our D's, and our D's look like these clover leaves. Okay, and the one, the two, the three numbers in front refer to how far away they are from the nucleus. So, in summary, we have energy levels that are broken into sublevels that are further divided into orbitals which are where you find the electrons. And what you should again see and recognize is that anytime I'm talking about an S sublevel, the only difference between 1S, 2S, 3S, and 4S is how far away I am from the nucleus. But if I'm talking about an S sublevel, I have two electrons maximum that I can hold. Okay? Anytime I'm talking about a P sublevel. Notice P sublevels don't come in until I get to the second energy level. Remember we said early on that each energy level has the same number of sublevels. So I'm in energy level two, so I have one, two sublevels. And again, notice how that number in front, that number two in front refers to my energy level number. But now my P refers to my sublevel type. My sublevel type is a P, and P's can always hold six. If I'm in the third energy level, then I can still hold six because I'm a P sublevel. If I'm in the fourth energy level, I can still hold six because I'm in the P sublevel. Right? Once I get to the third energy level, my third energy level, I'm going to need a third sublevel. And now I have my D's. D's can always hold 10. So if I'm in a 4D sublevel, 4 just means I'm the fourth energy level away from the nucleus, 
D means I'm in the D sublevel type, I would have 10 electrons. And then lastly, you can see F has 14. So I hope that helped you understand how we break down energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals, which are where we find the electrons in the quantum mechanical model. Thank you.